So I'm uh, testing at the moment the new firmware from the Lumagin with the fast format switching and all that stuff. And we are doing modifications for a long time for the Lumagin since years, to be honest. And uh, uh, we have in the past several times the issue that we have uh, sound quality changes if you uh, change the firmware and the new firmware do the same so um, we have uh, some um, we are testing normally with the Hans Zimmer if we compare uh, firmwares because it's a very difficult disc and uh, with a lot of uh, natural uh, instruments and a lot of pressure bass uh, vocals uh, so we have the core and all that uh, what is very very difficult to reproduce in the room um, and um, if all it's fine you will hear each instrument precisely in the room and you have a lot of space you have air and uh, the the emotion is quite on point so um, for example if you uh, take the da vinci code piece and uh, she's playing the violin then uh, the violin is really singing so it is it is so much emotion in that piece that you uh, normally get uh, goosebumps from and um, with the new firmware it's a little less it's 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 not worse it's not not bad but it's uh, missing some air it's missing some precisely uh, things and um, our customers have a little problems with, uh, with that so if you are a very very high-end customer and uh, especially if you hear music then it's uh, very important that it's on point especially if you know it, that it uh, can be better and uh, for a long time we used the firmware from September I think it was the 19th or uh, of September that was a quite good one uh, if you look at the sound so but of course in the in the time after that comes a lot of firmware updates and uh, uh, with some features uh, that the people like and of course the uh, past format switching is one of the biggest things uh, what we also like to have and um, I started to think about um, maybe it's time to make uh, another hardware upgrade for that. So because it's it, normally it's not not good if if it's the firm if the firmware can change the sound in that way. So maybe we can find some little points or some uh, room for improvement. Uh, and I I think I have to uh, I take an, a new look inside um, because it's quite um, it's a little more than one year ago we uh, do something on the unit uh, the last time and uh, maybe uh, I can find uh, some points and uh, I can take you with you with me and uh, let's uh, take a look inside um, if we maybe can improve that so that we have both the better picture the better um, benefits from the new firmware and maybe also a better sound with the new firmware and uh, i like to have the space and the uh, air around the instruments back again so let's do it Let's stop this for a moment. What can we see here? We can see here the four input cards and the two output cards. Furthermore, a part of the mainboard, the big cooler of the main processor, the fan. But to see more and for more detailed explanations, we have to disassemble the rest as well. 
So first we have to grab the screwdriver again. So now we can see much more and the Lumagen is a great example to explain how the voltage conditioning works in most devices. Mostly and also here only one voltage arrives at the board. Here it is 12 volt, which comes from the power supply. But these 12 volt are not used directly. All ICs in the device need much lower voltages. Take for example the silicon image chips from the input and output boards. They need a 1 volt voltage and a 3.3 volt for the clock. These voltages are distributed on the board with the help of DC-DC converters. The smaller the voltage is, the more important it is that the generation happens as close as possible to the chip. So the converters for the input boards are located directly at the socket for the boards. Now we are always looking for improvements to optimize the working situation in the devices and to get the voltage supply and the individual chips as stable as noise free as possible. In the case of the Lumagen, we have already made several upgrades in recent years with the aim of getting even more emotion out of the picture and sound. So we have already optimized everything with countless practical tests and the use of the best components. We have optimized the clock of the main processor. We have also changed the clocks on the input and output cards and idealized the on-site conditions in detail. We have added shielding, integrated RF filters, integrated snubbers, extended buffering and so on. Remember, we are looking for a way to solve our little problem with the sound performance of the new firmware versions. I would like to have the magic back in our example the Da Vinci code piece from the Hans Zimmer Blu-ray. So we should concentrate on what works more or differently with the newer firmwares. And that is of course the main processor, which sits here under the blue cooler. But first we check everything again and have a look at the side walls. The microcontroller for the infrared processing is not directly responsible for the signal processing, but we are interested in everything that can be optimized. The voltage here is a bit noisy, so we do our best to reduce it. This looks better now and we can turn our attention to the main processor. What we can do is we measure first uh, the voltage rails. Um, in the unit and we can do it here in this uh, on that connectors here and we know that we have um, one maybe you see that here 1.15 volts we have for the main processor inside and um, we can also measure the other points but uh, we will concentrate on that because that is the, the main power of the processor, what has to do more after the software. And we can um, measure it only on two points if we are in this situation here. So we have here one point, we can go here and see what is going on on the one volt rail. And that is already zoomed out at as much as much as possible. So we have very low noise there. 
but we maybe try to optimize that again or to go further with that um, to make the saturation for the chip better. So the other point is directly on the DC-DC converter. So we go here directly outside the DC-DC converter and what you can see that it's a little lower so you have lower noise or ripple on the DC-DC converter directly and if you go more inside the board you see that's almost a little higher now so that maybe can cause uh, cause the problem that the performance of the chip is uh, not stable uh, with the software changes so but to uh, know exactly what's going on we have to go under the chip so we need to know what uh, how looks that directly on the chip because that here this point here is not directly on the chip it's it's um, five centimeters away and we go under the chip to measure what's going on there to make sure that's uh, the point what, uh, where it has to be stable so but therefore we have to put the board out because we can't measure it like that so it's a little tricky so let's go further put all out here and we try to measure it again so let's do it Here. Very careful. Yep. Yeah. So that looks not really bad here because we prepared already a lot of things there. And what we do now is to try to optimize that again. So what we will do now is to extend the buffering of the voltage directly at the chip with selected capacitors. Furthermore, I will change the power inductor at the DC-DC converter. We already changed it once, but I want to change the characteristics slightly to reduce the losses even more. It's actually been over a year since we last upgraded the Lumagen. We've had our experience since then, of course, and the selection of good components has also increased. We are now happy to measure again whether the situation has changed and whether we have actually been able to improve the measurement. Of course, this is not much, but there is actually less noise to measure. First of all, I would like to thank you for watching the video up to this point. If you continue to enjoy videos like this, please let us know in the comments. As we have done many times in the past, we have further optimized some things on the device. Of course, measuring devices have constantly accompanied us on our journey and confirmed and also reassured us. But measurements are not the reason why we are doing all this. For us, the experience, the emotion awakened in us has always been the reason. With your cinema, you have the possibility to call up any emotion at any time. The quality of the system decides 
where it is always the white one and with what intensity you experience it. We only facilitate the transport of the right emotion with the help of modifications. In the end, are they the right emotions? Those desired by the director or the musician? And do we really experience them intensively? That is something everyone can only decide for themselves. Whether we have achieved what we set out to do with the modification. Is the magic of the Hans Zimmer disk with the newer firmware fully present again or maybe not? I would like to leave this up to everyone. For my part, I actually only ever stop when I'm satisfied with the result. Are you also happy? The trouble with the Lumagen in the past was that it was very much dependent on the quality of the firmware. So if you got a bad firmware, which was very demanding for the chip, the sound quality and the picture quality were degraded. So it was more or less like the Forrest Gump's box of chocolates. You never knew what you would get. But these days are over, it seems, with the latest incarnation of the Cinemic Lumagen modification. Uh, he found a way to get around this and now with all the firmwares the quality of the sound is pristine, is very three-dimensional as is the picture. So I can only say very well done Cinemic. Thank you. Yeah Mike, <laughs> you keep on amazing me every every time. Every time it's like uh, everything you do on a modification uh, then it's like yeah when it's this is the end, it's not going to get any better. But every time you improve something, you notice it right away on, on video level, uh, audio performance. It's all in the small details, uh, fine dynamics, uh, all that combined with the picture quality. You keep on amazing me. What I see here or I hear here is uh, unbelievable because uh, it is a very, very big step uh, for more natural experience and it goes more in, in, in the space and uh, more it's more em emotion what you can feel with this version here. Yeah. The Da Vinci Code from the Hans Zimmer disc is one of my reference tracks. And every time the experience is different and better. It's, it's incredible what you keep on surprising me. It's every time it gets closer to the real thing. And that's where, the, where, where your quality is, where the magic is. And that's where you want to touch the people that they are really joining the event or the concert. It's really, really impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is, that is, and for me, uh, uh, now I'm sure from this moment uh, I need this modification so quick as it <laughs> is possible. Yeah, but um, yes, I have to wait. I know uh, you have to do some other things here, and uh, yeah, I wait on this, and I can only give a big uh, a compliment to Cinemike how he has, uh, yeah. Uh, make a such big uh, step. That's your unique strength uh, in, in the Cinemic product and more people have to have to experience this. This is this is amazing and you blow me again away and I know you since uh, 2012 and you're a fucking genius. <laughs> uh, for you it's normal that you invite the people which are uh, like to compare the components, the standard components uh, to your components, which you are is uh, modifying, that uh, you are open for this. And the people, I'm sure, which leave this house say they will come back. <laughs>